Yeah, hi, hello everyone. Good morning and good evening. So before uh, I talk about push that development and something, uh, just let me know first that uh, you guys are able to uh, see my screen and as well as you are able to hear my voice properly. Just give me that uh, confirmation uh, so that uh, we can go ahead. Yeah, we can see your screen and your voice also audible. Yeah, yeah. good. Uh, Aman, uh, it seems uh, uh, your audio is uh, like you know something problem. You you just cross check like and if you are able to hear me fine. Uh, if not, you simply uh, rejoin Aman. Arman. Fine guys, so without much delay, we will be getting into the topic. Okay, before I talk about uh, this what I called, you know, the full stack development, uh, so let me give you some small intro about myself. So, uh, my name is Kesho. Uh, I have been uh, working as a uh, full stack developer for past uh, nine plus years. So the moment uh, I started my journey as a uh, developer, so I started giving training. So I am into both uh, development and uh, training for past uh, nine plus years. So, and I am into different technologies. So, I am well worked with both uh, Java and uh, Node stack. Uh, coming to the uh, website designing, and also I am good with uh, HTML, CSS, uh, all JavaScript, and both. Uh, you know, flavors like React Base and Angular. Coming to the databases, uh, I work uh, with both uh, SQL based databases like uh, MySQL, uh, etc., and also the NoSQL database. I'm very good with the NoSQL database called MongoDB. So, that's it. Uh, this is some small uh, you know, uh, intro about myself. So, without uh, wasting much time on this, we will proceed to the topic. So, the word like, you know, full stack development. So, before we uh, learn the technologies involved in the full stack development, so first thing is like, you know, uh, the purpose here. So, why we need to learn uh, full stack uh, development. So, on our daily basis, uh, we will be working with uh, different, different applications, right? Uh, uh, from our, uh, the moment you know we wake up uh, and till the moment we sleep, uh, we usually have to work with a different kind of application uh, on internet. Right? So, in that scenario, like uh, see, let's say example, we are using your computer, laptop, or desktop, or whatever it is. Then we might work with the uh, one which I am using now, something like Notepad or. Uh, something like uh, some games also, right, in the computer, or uh, something like you know, uh, some media player. You wanted to uh, you know, play some video, something like that. Media player, or uh, something like you know, the calculator, something like this here, and some games as well. So these are one category of applications uh, which we usually work on our uh, daily basis. So apart from this, uh, we can even work something like this: uh, Gmail, so for train service booking like you know IRCTC or something like uh, Facebook. Uh, we have different things like yeah. So these two things. Uh, at these two, to me we are just a, a category. So what is the fundamental difference uh, uh, between these two categories? Uh, uh, anyone? Yeah. I want answers from you also guys. So you can unmute yourself, you can say your answer or you can even post your answer in the chat box. Any answer is fine. So just as a layman, I'm not talking uh, much technical things into this, but uh, you know, so normally I'm just asking like this. What is the fundamental difference between these two categories of applications here? Yeah, anyone? Uh, Babu, Achana, Vinay. All are able to hear me, uh, Arman. You just uh, speak on it. 
this text that uh, text that use this different yeah so apart from that yeah uh, Khalifa so what is the difference between those two categories of uh, applications Babu Binay Achana. So, what is the question, okay, sir? The question is like, you know, what is the difference between the two categories of applications which I just mentioned over there? So, the notepad, media players, and calculators, that doesn't need any internet, non internet based mm -hmm. application. So, these are the internet based applications. And there might be. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. So uh, I don't want much technical details, but just uh, the fundamental difference. So just as a layman, you know, uh, if you look at these two categories of applications, in simple words, we can say if you wanted to run uh, the first category of application, actually we do not require internet. But if you wanted to go with the uh, second category of application, means like if you want to use them, definitely you require the internet. The first category of applications are uh, known as Standalone application. Some people say desktop application, but actually they are uh, standalone application. Uh, the second category here are known as web based application. These are called web based application. Simple words people say like you know web application. Yeah. So here, uh, why actually we do not require internet here? Simply we cannot say that uh, if you wanted to use Gmail, we need internet. Okay, yes, but why? So here, why? Uh, because these are also software applications which are developed through some program. Definitely, these are also applications which are developed, uh, you know, by creating some program. So, what is the difference actually here? Is uh, in simple words, I can say that if you wanted to work with this category of application, here uh, you require one mission, one PC. Uh, simply, I can say only one mission should be uh, running at a time uh, to, you know, work with these kind of, you know. Application. So, but when you talk about uh, the second category of application, uh, minimum you, you you need to have two computers or two machines uh, at a time uh, should be working in order to you know uh, utilize uh, any of this application. So, why? Because uh, say uh, in simple words, I can say that uh, when you talk about a uh, calculator in your computer. So uh, how that calculator? Someone uh, at some time already the programs related to that calculator, everything is already been uh, created over there, right? And that particular software is installed in your computer uh, through OS or sometimes you do uh, externally also, whatever it is. But it is installed once and run any number of times you want. Yes, we can able to uh, you know uh, do that. So that is like kind of a, a policy for your uh, standard. But when you talk about the second category, let's say example of uh, uh, Gmail. See, if you guys, uh, you know, say that, uh, if I ask you a question like, uh, where is your Gmail? Uh, and if you say, uh, my Gmail is in my phone, yes, definitely it is there, but uh, it might be there. But uh, in your computer, like in your laptop, also you can open your Gmail, right? Even in my laptop also, if you guys remember your credentials, you can open your Gmail account, right? So, what does it mean here? So, uh, the Gmail actually, uh, the data or anything, is not actually storing in uh, your uh, local device, like your phone or your tab or your computer. Uh, but you are using it to connect it to the Gmail. But originally, your Gmail account related thing, or your Gmail, I can say simple words, your Gmail is stored in some other place, right? So, so that some other place is uh, nothing but, say, server computer. So, that is also a computer. And the computer which or the system which we are using to connect to that, uh, you know, server computer is called client computer. And the uh, one where actually, you know, uh, the main uh, application is stored is called what? Server computer. So, the client computer is the one which we use. Server is one something which is at a remote place at, uh, actually. So, we need to connect uh, from our system to the, you know, the server system. Here we cannot make uh, our own establishment, like, you know, 
we cannot make our own wires, uh, you know, to connect from here to there, right? So then what we use is already in this world, so many computers are already, uh, you know, uh, connected with the, each other. You know that, right? That is nothing but internet in simple words, I can say. As in this is your computer, this is your friend computer, uh, this is Facebook uh, server computer, uh, this is your college computer, and this is uh, Gmail computer, and this is uh, IRPTC, this is Twitter computer, something like that. So all uh, are already connected. So servers are also computers. The only difference is their capability is bigger. Our personal computer's uh, capability is, you know, limited, where servers capability and their infrastructure is big. That is only, you know, uh, difference. Even if you want, you can uh, uh, search that as well. So here, so server PC, something like this here. Yeah, you are able to see, right? So these are also, yes, uh, computers are. So, uh, like this. I hope you are able to see these things. Sometimes if, if they are very big and all, yeah, you can able to see like this. Even in the movies also, you guys usually have the right. So these are also computers where uh, it does not require any input device like uh, keyboard or monitor. Now, uh, here the important thing is, uh, okay, this is your computer like your PC one, whatever, and you wanted to connect it to this, uh, you know, uh, Gmail server computer. So then, what we do here is, because all are, all are connected to internet only, but how can you connect it to the particular, uh, you know, computer here is, uh, simply we use a concept called uh, uh, IP address. So here I am not writing the right IP addresses, just like that I am writing. As in this is email IP address, then we need to open the gateway like a browser in your computer, we have to connect to uh, the particular computer. But remembering the IP addresses for uh, different different applications uh, is definitely a hectic task because in our daily on our daily basis we work with multiple applications, right? So instead of typing the IP address in the, the address bar, what we do is instead of the IP address, we go with something called domain name. Means the same instead of typing this, what we can do is we can go with something like gmail.com. If you type gmail.com, then we will be connected to particular. But one thing uh, here is important that this is uh, for ourselves, like, you know, for users, uh, for us. But in the background, uh, you know, the machines will be connected through uh, IP addresses. And so why I am talking about all this here? Because why actually we require internet for working with the web-based applications and why we do not require for the first category called, you know, the standard and application system. You need two systems to be connected with each other, client and server. That is the reason if you do not have internet connection or if you have the poor internet connection at that time, you will be getting a message like unable to reach gmail.com, unable to reach uh, irctc.com, something like that you will be getting the message on your browser. That means here the problem is you are unable to connect it to the server. So that is, that is the reason why actually we need internet. So why I am talking about all these things because here your uh, source of, you know, the full stack development is uh, nothing but say complete the development of web application or in simple words I can say like full stack development is nothing but it's an end to end web application development process here. And what are the things involved in it and all? Now we are going to discuss and we will be talking about uh, certain uh, terms and as well as we are talking about different uh, technologies involved in it. So as we already uh, got to know that uh, here server and uh, you know, client systems both will be there in the case of uh, web applications, right? So here so assume like this small one is a client uh, system here, uh, this one, and the right side, this bigger one is like, you know, the uh, server system. So already both are uh, connected now with the help of uh, the internet, they have been connected. Now what we will do here, we will be opening a browser and we will be start connecting and we will be working with that particular application. Let's say example, you are dealing with Gmail. When you wanted to work with Gmail, what we do here, we have to, uh, you know, 
uh, go with the uh, sign up first you need to do sign up for registration that is valid for that you need to provide uh, multiple uh, details over there and then click uh, register button then what happens here is immediately your data will go from your client system to the server computer or server system inside the server system uh, there will be particular you know program already which uh, it's been written over there and that program uh, can be anything uh, let's say example of something like uh, uh, registration so what exactly this uh, program will do here is uh, that will take the data whatever it you know, is been uh, coming from your uh, client system so that uh, data assume like this small this one that will be like data the data will be taken and it calls the database so your uh, server system internally has the capability to you know uh, talk with the uh, database here so it calls the uh, database and it stores that data into your uh, database here so uh, let's say example here uh, uh, we are uh, you know sign up, uh, doing sign up activity here with the help of uh, something like uh, vinay at gmail dot com is the username and something like one two three four is the password. So then what happens? Uh, all other details also we entered here. So now uh, it will be stored into your uh, database here. So once uh, that is done, then a small message also generated in your uh, program registration program. That message will be sent back to your uh, client machine. Uh, something like you know your registration now uh, uh, successfully completed and your all your data will be stored in this uh, uh, database in the form of a table inside the table it will be done now you'll be getting some uh, message back from your uh, you know server system to the client system here now next next day also you wanted to work with the uh, uh, gmail then what you will do again we will be doing the sign up right no we don't do that right so because only one time we do sign up so one time process then if you wanted to work with us uh, we go with an option called uh, login right? so we we do provide two uh, credentials like you know, user id or username something and then password the moment you hit that then what happens is that the data also you know uh, will be uh, going from your client system to the server this time uh, your server system will have uh, you know another program program name is like login program and what that program will do here is uh, whatever the credentials you are entering it will be cross checking that so whether that is correct or not how it can do it is already been stored in your uh, you know gmail account right so from that uh, from the table it will take the data out and whatever the data uh, you are entering now so both will be matched here let's say same example like when at gmail dot com some password you are entering now uh, in this program both will be matched so both means what the things which you entered currently and the original password and user so if both are matched here two possibilities right may be matched may not be matched if both are matched what happens is one home page will be uh, generated here and that home page will be sent back to your uh, client uh, in the form of a response in the form of what here in the form of a response so what does it mean by response here see whatever it is actually going from your client system to the server is called a request and whatever it is getting back from the server computer to the client is called what response so always so whatever the first thing we did sign up right at the time we entered all the details and click the button register data is going that is for request next time we did uh, username password then we click the button login that is also sent to the server what exactly server will do is server will be uh, you know uh, processing all the uh, requests so server will process all the requests uh, which are uh, coming from the client so client submission can be anything as i told you already starting like uh, it may be a computer or like you know a desktop or laptop or it may be a mobile or anything so that it is connected to the internet but server will be only one yeah sorry now uh, another case is what uh, it is registration login correct uh, credentials correct home page will be returned if not if not what happens here is one error message will be you know 
are generated over there something like uh, your um, credentials wrong or password do not match or username and password are not correct something any english that doesn't matter so that kind of error message will be uh, you know uh, generated over here and that will be sent back as a error. so what i want to say here is all these things i'm talking like programs 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 here registration program we can even search up for it uh, we can search with one keyword so as per that in the database uh, you know any mail server that keyword so that mail should be popped out right and that should be uh, in the form of a list that should be again you know uh, should be sent back to your uh, computer like you know your client computer uh, as a uh, in the form of a uh, you know response so this as in like these boxes are like programs so how that will be done so directly these things are not available in your a uh, server means someone uh, usually write that right some programs will be uh, written over there and all those programs together uh, we say server side software or we call it as we call it as uh, server side software so in order to create the server side software people take the help of server side technology yes it is java or node or python or dot net or php something all right like so these are the technologies by using which people develop the programs and all those programs together is like in you know, server side software and which has been installed in the our computer but when you are doing the real time development we will not use only uh technology like only language apart from the language we use something uh, else that is called framework what we call it as something like you know framework so what exactly uh, the framework will do here is firstly framework is not a uh, language programming language it is built on the top of certain program but what it will do is it will make developer life easy like for example in java language we have a spring in the node we have something called express so if you use java along with spring your activities will become easy and uh, for python you have something like django for dot net uh, dot net core and ls dot net something like that right. so uh, these are the things uh, you know uh, related to the server side software development but when we want all these things to happen you need to click right you need to click the button you need to enter the data then only request is gone and it is processed with this program but to where we can click that is important where we can able to click if i want to click it or if i want to enter the data client side also we need certain software here so client side also we need soft so the client side software is nothing but here simply the website or the web pages so that is nothing but it's a combination of web pages why because if i want to do the sign up we will go with sign up page side. what is website it's a consist of Different different web pages, right? All together integrated is nothing but a website. So we want uh, to work with uh, any web based application. Uh, as a user, already we are done. Like we need to connect it to the server and we have to work. But as a developer, if you wanted to create the web based application, so like you know, client side software to be created and server side. If you can learn any of these technologies and uh, logical skills, you can create the. Uh, you know, uh the server side software uh, along with basic uh, you know database uh, things yes we can able to do with that but coming to the client side here web pages if you wanted to create web pages here uh one should be good with the three uh, basic technologies here uh, they are html css and java here html css and java using these we can create web pages and together uh you know subsequently we can create website so once these two are ready like you know web pages website and uh, the server side software then only you know one can able to work with the uh, web page application let's say uh, this small thing is a uh, you know uh, something like user now just assume that is a user a user wants to connect with one particular you know uh, application here then uh, if you want to connect it to your uh, complete application uh, see here you will go through only the client side software always because we can't see how the registration see let's say example we are the gmail user 
we don't know how the registration program is written and what kind of database is used, how it's been, you know, uh, credentials are taken, right? All these things we cannot see as a user. That's the reason this site development, whatever it's been mentioned here, right? The server side. So this site development in the industry is called back-end development. So what we call this is back-end development. And the things what we see is only like, you know, what kind of a web page it is, what color it is, and what kind of uh, the form it is, and where the form is placed, and uh, all the things we can able to see, right? So those things are nothing but, you know, your uh, client-side software and all, or your uh, website side. So these things we can able to see. That's the reason, uh, you know, uh, in the industry here, this side, the development of, you know, uh, this side is called printing. We call it as printing. And the people, uh, you know, who develop, uh, you know, uh, backend technologies or the complete, you know, server-side program are known as backend developers and the guys who are responsible for the front-end side, like, you know, or the client-side, website, website designing and all, those are known as front-end developers. As a user is able to, to connect, uh, able to connect to the complete application only through a gateway called, you know, the client-side software, right? So, that's the reason we call this client side thing as UI. So means user interface. So user can able to connect it to the complete application only through uh, you know, uh, this. If you guys observe here properly, uh, when I mention like server side software to be created, different different programs to be written, right? And to be installed or uh, to be placed in the server. For that, you can use uh, any of the uh, server side technology. You can go either. I, I use the slash oblique either Java, R Node, R Python, R .NET. But when I talked about this to create the web pages here, I mentioned HTML, comma CSS, comma Java. So why actually? Because here the purpose, definitely the purpose of HTML different should be different, the purpose of a CSS should be different, and the purpose of JavaScript should be different. So what exactly it will do here is HTML will add content to our web page. So what it can do here, it is responsible for the content of the web page. So what does it mean by content? Whenever we open any web page, whatever we see is nothing but the content. Let's say example, you open any web page like uh, Wikipedia site. And most of the times so what we see there, text. More text and sometimes link, right? images, uh, YouTube, something like video set. So, content, all these things include content. Now, all the content uh, to the web pages can be added only with the help of these. Are simple words, HTML is purely responsible for the content of the web page. Then, all the content is added through HTML, right? then why, uh, you know, CSS? Because HTML will add raw content, like, uh, let's say, example, our web page is having simply, like, dear students, uh, welcome to full stack. That is only one heading is there. But that heading should be in a green color or yellow color or red color, right? So these things are, you know, not taken care by uh, the HTML alone. So that is done with the help of uh, CSS here. So in simple words, I can say that CSS, uh, you know, uh, adds styling to your page. So that's the reason uh, it's responsible for the appearance of your website. We have both content and uh, uh, you know, uh, appearance. Right? Then why JavaScript? Yes. That is the place where it is very important that using both HTML and CSS, uh, the guys can able to uh, you know uh, create only static web pages. Static means we cannot uh, you know interact with that web pages. Content is there. Uh, it's beautiful, you know, place, and all that. We can see only, but we cannot do anything with that. But when you talk about the real-time application, the scenario is not like that. So we have to interact with that. So to add that dynamic nature, default they are static, right? To add that dynamic nature to your uh, you know, web pages, we use a language here called uh, JavaScript. Here, using JavaScript, we can able to add the uh, dynamic nature to our web pages. And both HTML and CSS are very easy languages, and you know they are pretty uh, straightforward languages. Uh, in simple words, I can say that 
uh, HTML consists more of tag. If you learn that, then fine. And uh, CSS, it is more of you know uh, properties. If you can learn those properties, then yes, you are done with. It. But when you talk about the JS, it's a few programming language like you know, Java, Python, dot PHP kind of thing. So that's the reason when you are developing the uh, front end side application, uh, apart from the pure JavaScript language, we also take the help of something called what? Framework here. Front end side also will be using the framework. But if you look at the back end side, you have so many players, right? So, but here front end side, the main is like you know JavaScript. So that's the reason for this JavaScript, we have uh, multiple frameworks are available here. So in that list, uh, we have so many uh, like Angular, uh, React JS, uh, like Vue JS, uh, Next JS, Nest JS. Number is so like, like that. Uh, we have so many uh, frameworks, but out of them, these three are uh, you know, most famous nowadays, and these two are like almost uh, equal to this back. But uh, in recent years, uh, the React has got more popularity due to its uh, you know versatile features and uh, those things. I can talk later, but yeah. So in our course, uh, we'll be going with something called you know uh, React. So guys here. We are is responsible for creating the front end of your web application is called what? Front end development. And uh, we are is responsible for creating the server side application is called what? Back end development. And the process is back end development and the people are known as back end developers. Right? But in the industry, who deals with uh, both front end and as well as the back end of a complete application are known as full stack developers and such kind of development is known as full stack development here. So that is what full stack development is about. So full stack development is nothing but the process of developing complete web application from the scratch or uh, two major uh, you know departments or two major uh, things I can say like part both front end development and back end development together is called what step development and the people who are doing this are called step development. So in the industry earlier uh, there used to be a complete uh, separate thing for back end development and front end development. But these days you know uh, if they are already working as a front end developer, they are asking their employees to learn one of the back end languages. Or if they are already back end developers, uh, they are asking uh, you know to learn front end technology. I am using the word asking, but actually uh, they are forcing us because uh, they want uh, their resources to be you know uh, good uh, with uh, well worked with uh, you know, different different uh, you know, technology. So as a fresher, also uh, they expect you to have. Uh, the knowledge on two sides, both the uh, server side development and as well as uh, the client side development. So that's the reason uh, it is like you know, the customary thing nowadays that uh, we need to learn uh, all the sides of you know your uh, web application uh, development process. So coming to uh, my course here, uh, the course will be uh, completely uh, practical, guys here. No, I will be explaining all the concepts and all, but uh, it is not like just uh, destinations and all, no, complete, uh, it will be like a practical. And uh, during this course, uh, we will be doing uh, you know, 5 plus uh, projects here, uh, for the course. And uh, we will be dealing with uh, uh, around uh, 50 plus uh, you know, uh, different, different uh, scenarios and something like that, different, different tasks we will be doing. And I'll be giving you the uh, assignments, so I am expecting you guys to do that. And uh, the class will be like you know, uh, daily live session will be there. But once uh, you know the session is happening, uh, it will be automatically uh, recorded. So the live uh, you know recorded sessions. be provided to you guys uh, you know uh, uh, 
we have a cloud setup so we'll be giving that uh, credentials to you so that you know every day uh, once the class is done uh, in an hour uh, kind of thing uh, that will be uploaded to that uh, particular you know cloud and uh, you guys can uh, access it from uh, anywhere like you missed one class uh, in some Agent thing and you no need to feel like you know uh, next class like you know just something that you can like you know you can simply go through the class and previous class you can come to the you know mid session and yeah so apart from this uh, you know uh, we'll be providing you the uh, interview guidance and you know the insights uh, you know uh, in the industry how you know you need to uh, because uh, whatever the Uh, sessions I take here and the things I follow here are industry standards. So our course is at par with the industry standards. So, so we'll be dealing with that. So yeah, that's it. Uh, these are the things I know uh, uh, related to our course. Uh, so in this uh, session, as a demonstration session, so I do not want to uh, get into the uh, particular what I say like HTML section and that. so I don't want to get a deep into uh, particular thing here. So the complete uh, course will be uh, two months uh, but it will take uh, like you know around two and a half months uh, when you are dealing with that. So in that uh, first we will be starting from this front end and uh, uh, next you know we will be learning the back end along with the, you know, your uh, uh, database here. Yeah. And uh, beginner or already you know working professional or uh, if you are already an IT uh, professional but you wanted to switch your career so all people are you know uh, welcome so the course is for all and uh, if you have any uh, zero knowledge in the coding and all yes, still you can able to learn the only thing is like you, know, you should have a basic uh, computer knowledge to work with the file system and the browser and all that is more than enough you know uh, to start with your uh, journey here. And you no need to install any particular software also uh, to start with your journey. At this moment, uh, till at least uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, so we no need to install you know uh, anything else. So there are some students, my previous students, uh, who are from uh, different different backgrounds, like uh, you know uh, B.Sc. Chemistry and uh, Bachelor of Arts B.A. and even B.Com. So they are now working as a full stack developer. So uh, it's not a big deal if you really have that you know, a passion for uh, learning because here everything will be practical. I will be making sure, uh, I'll be making sure that uh, you know you guys are having the better uh, you know knowledge uh, as fast, as much as possible. So coming to the front end here, uh, you know the technologies are like you know uh, common. So HTML, so CSS. JavaScript. So along with that, uh, we'll be learning the framework called uh, React. So coming to the uh, back end here, so here is the option for you guys that you know you can go with the Node stack or you can go with the you know uh, Java stack here, and you can even go with the something called you know uh, Python stack here. So the databases which are going with actually Node stack, the Node completely includes that. Uh, Node Express and uh, MongoDB. So this is the stack of uh, Node. And coming to the Java, Total Java, Core and Advanced Java. So apart from that, you'll be learning something called Spring Boot. And here the database, uh, you know, uh, you will be learning is MySQL, uh, SQL language and uh, uh, MySQL uh, database here. Uh, coming to the Python also same uh, here, uh, but the framework will be changing here. Uh, like you'll be learning the uh, Django framework. Yeah. And you guys can prefer anything, but uh, I usually recommend uh, for the people who wanted to switch uh, the career or uh, who are freshers to go with the, the first one, like you know, the uh, node uh, stack. Why? Because see here, uh, I hope you're able to see this. Uh, you might heard this something like MARN stack, right? So MARN is also nothing but node full stack development. For Java and Python, we directly have a normal name like you know, Java full stack or Python full stack. But for Node full stack, we have some big special name, something like MARN stack and all. Here, MARN is nothing but see, HTML, CSS is of common, but uh, you know, framework will change it, Angular view sometimes. So, R actually here, in MARN, R for React. 
M for MongoDB, uh, N for Node.js, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, E for X, right? so that's it. Monster. The advantage of that is uh, you are already learning JavaScript language here. In the React also JavaScript is there. In the Node, you no need to learn any new language to uh, develop the backend end program because no escape for you. We have to learn the front end with the JavaScript or React. So in the back end, uh, if you are preferring Java means you have to learn one new programming language or something from the scratch because already you learn JavaScript and you work with JavaScript in both uh, pure days and the React days. Again, here you have to learn a new language and same is the case with Python. But if you go with the uh, you know Node JS stack, the advantage is here is the JavaScript and here also we'll be using both you know JavaScript in the express plane. Even for the MongoDB also. Uh, database connections also you don't require SQL to be learned here. If you know JavaScript through JavaScript only we write the you know query management and all in the MongoDB so in the separate operation. Right, so that's it. That, that's my recommendation actually. But uh, yeah, you can, you can see. So here I deal with the uh, both the uh, uh, Node stack and as well as uh, the Java stack here. Complete front end I will be taking. I only will be teaching HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and uh, React. -based. Coming to the back end, so Node I will be teaching and Java I will be teaching. Python someone else. Uh, okay. So that's it guys. I don't want to take uh, much time on demonstration day. So that's it from uh, my side. Uh, I hope you guys are uh, you know, uh, given your uh, detail. Yes, sir. I have a question for you. So yeah, yeah. Have you been this React JS in this? Yes, yes. Yeah, we are going. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I meant. What about Spring Boot? What, what? What about the Spring Boot? Yeah, yes. Uh, so you are able to see my screen, right? So in this yeah. content, HTML, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, JS, uh, coming so to the back end. Yeah, yeah. Three, sorry, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three stacks I mentioned, right? So if yeah. you are choosing the Java stack, you will be dealing with Java, Spring Boot. Then SQL, MySQL, also okay. like that. Yeah. So, Srinivas, actually, uh, all others are able to hear me. Babu, you are able to hear me, right? Properly. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the problem is from your end, Srinivas. You just uh, process it. I hope you all are, uh, you know, have given details to uh, my team. So, if not, you can, you know, uh, just ping uh, in the chat box. Your details like your this, your mail ID and your phone number uh, to the organizer. Just to do that uh, if you have not done yet. Yeah. So now that's it, guys. So that's it from my side. Now I am open to your questions. You can uh, shoot out your questions in the chat box, or you can even you know unmute yourself and you can ask your uh, questions. So I'm more than happy to answer you guys. Yeah, uh, Vinay, uh, you have any questions? If not, if you do not have questions, I just to mention in the chat box like uh, you are clear at least so that you know I will be getting that knowledge. Uh, Achana? Yeah, hi, Keisha. Uh, so actually, I understand what you said. Uh, but actually, uh, currently I'm working with the enterprise application, so the code will be written by them. So it would be useful while I learn these courses like Java Spring Boot and all. Uh, being I'm working in an enterprise application, right? Yes, that but is you're Java. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, working as a? Uh, Java developer. Okay, yeah, definitely it will be uh, useful, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, this uh, particular project uh, might be like this, but uh, then definitely, you know, other things will be full stack, right? Uh, even the people who are working only on the tool based also, uh, nowadays they are uh, learning this because uh, the companies are asking. Yeah, so definitely it will be advantage to you. That you are a developer, right? Yeah, so you have to see the front end side as well. Yeah, okay. Maybe you are dealing with, uh, you know, uh, small enhancements in your project. Uh, maybe currently, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, so there might be a requirement uh, for us to go with even from the scratch or even the new models also to be developed sometimes, right? So, yes, we have to be good with, you know, creation of EAPIs, 
API testing. See how the real time things will be there. In that way only it will be you know uh, taught in the course. So I did not talk about all those things, but yes, we'll be doing all those. Yeah, actually, uh, we uh, we basically deal with defects. So will mm -hmm. this useful for that like this course? Yeah, that's what I am telling. For your uh, career development, definitely it will be useful more than uh, useful. I think. May not be right now or uh, in your project, but definitely it will be useful and uh, uh, you can consider yourself as a uh, very good resource after uh, completing uh, this course. Okay. Thank you. Srinivas, uh, you have any doubts? Not able to hear me. Jennifer, are you able to hear me? It's your response. Yeah. Jennifer, able to hear me? If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. So, I hope you all uh, have given your details uh, to the admin department. Just to give me the confirmation, right? So that you know, they'll be in touch with you, the timings and the batch starting date. So, Babu, you have given, right? You know, and that, you know. Yeah, I provided the details, but uh, morning time and, and may not be possible for me. May not possible yeah. for me. Uh, if it is the evening, I'm sure I'm going to attend. Okay, yeah, fine, fine. Yeah, we will be planning, no problem. I will communicate with them. Yeah. I will to communicate with them. Yeah. 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 It will be a daily course or the weekends? No, no. It will be daily course. Uh, five days a week. Uh, sometimes maybe Saturday, but usually five days. So how long is going to take this whole session? Like, like your uh, course you are talking? Yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, two, two and a half months. Two, two and a half months. Yeah. In the sound. Yeah, okay. In the, maybe in the morning times it will be possible for me, but uh, night, evening or night it won't. Yeah, mo mo mostly, you know, uh, this, this session will start with the same morning time. Another session will start, uh, you know, start uh, will be for evening. Yeah, we will be have the time. Mm. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, you, you also given your details, right? Ask me how the uh, admin details, right? Oh, no, I haven't shared that, but I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll talk to them. Yeah, you got a call? Uh, oh, or is there a question? No, no, actually, I got a message. So previously, I have inquired for it. So just I got a message from the link I have joined. But they'll contact me, but I have the number. They can contact them or they can contact yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, okay, then fine. So that, you know, they'll be informing you at the right uh, time. Yeah, sure, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you uh, have given your details. Just to give me that information. That, you know, my team has your details. Uh, you have given the details. One final thing, like you know, or uh, you guys have still not shared your details, uh, you know, uh, you guys can you know uh, share your uh, uh, details to the number you know uh, through which uh, you got a call, or you know on our site also you know at full stack uh, we'll be having that. So you 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 guys can do that, or here uh, I'm just sharing the uh, number. You can. You know, So through this number, uh, you, you guys can ping your uh, uh, details and you can simply mention like, uh, so attended, uh, you know, uh, full stack session, uh, by case of insight, you can say that and you can send your details, just your phone number and your uh, 
uh, my lady along with your name so that you know they'll be in uh, touch with you regarding the timing so that's it guys thank you uh, so looking forward to meet you uh, soon so have a great day guys Thank you, sir. Very soothing. Thanks for your trust. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, guys, you can note down the number. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye.